Excellent, Luca. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. Thank you so much to everybody for being here with us today. Um, we wanted to do like a little bit of a show of hands to see where everybody is in terms of their human design experience. Um, if you're on camera, you can sort of raise your hand or if you can, if you want, you can drop it in the chat. Like who here has never interacted with human design? This is your very first experience with the system. Anyone? Okay, great. Good to know. Good to know. And then who here has had some experience, has fallen down any internet rabbit holes, <laughs> um, watched some videos about the system, anything like that? Raise your hand. Cool. Cool. Very nice. Sort and then, of. yeah, sort of. Jill. Okay, great. I, I have a couple of friends that are practitioners. Cool. But, and, and I've, as an astrologer and similar studies in the Department of Spiritual Care, I get little connections with what I do. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then who here has had a reading, like a full on one on one session with a professional? Anybody? Uh, with my friends, I've had just a 20 minute. Cool. Very nice. Um, so we wanted to sort of ease everybody in, so to speak, with this system because it is very complex and there is a lot to know. And so we wanted to start by introducing ourselves. My name is Juji. I'm a co-creator of Genetic Yoga with Steven. Uh, he's been my teacher for years now, and we've been working together to create an online learning experience with human design. Uh, it's a community-based space where we do workshops. Um, there are video interviews that are available for people to view, and there's uh, live discussions like this one uh, every Tuesday evening. So the reason why we wanted to do this series with Alchemist Kitchen, other than the fact that we love talking about human design, is that there are a lot of layers to this, right? So we wanted to talk at first about what our experience was meeting the system, getting to know this about ourselves, and uh, then take any of your questions. So before we get started, Stephen, would you like to introduce yourself and sort of give us a background of your 22 plus years of experience? Has it been that long? Apparently. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it. Time flies, right? Well, one of the first things that we learn in human design is that time is an illusion. So in the illusion of time, yes, I've been at it quite a while. Um, I met human design on the island of Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts back in the summer of 1999. Um, I didn't come into this voluntarily. My <laughs> girlfriend at the time uh, had a friend whose father was one of the very first teachers that was a graduate directly from the source of this information, Ra Aruthu. And he was one of what's called the Vienna 20 that were the first 20 people that were certified by Ra to become human design teachers. So through that connection, uh, my girlfriend got a reading from Ed and then immediately insisted that I also get one. And at the time, I had no interest in anything that would even smell of spirituality. I worked in restaurants, real estate. Uh, I worked at the nightclub on the island. And, you know, that's where all my interests slide. And over time, uh, she wore me down. And, <laughs> and Ed was a cool guy. And we got along just as two guys hanging out. He's much older. He was about 18 years older than me. And um, eventually I succumbed to getting a reading. And at the time, back in 1999, which is very different than the way human design is introduced these days, it was a really primitive in terms of how you did a reading. And we had one book to work from, or he had one book and he would read from this book and then do his best to interpret that for me. And the one thing that just 
stayed with me is that there was just something really compelling about it. I really didn't get it. You know, it kind of said, I guess, nice things about me or things that I could relate to. But it really just piqued my interest. And often you hear people say at the beginning that it's really interesting. And that's how a lot of people get led into this knowledge. So from that moment forward, I got very pretty much attached to the hip of this man. And we spent all our time together. And I just wanted to learn as much as I could. And at the time, you know, pre really pre-internet on most levels, definitely pre-social media, he was my only source to even learn more that, um, you know, you had to order the books or get the CDs from, from England sent to you to get any more information. So I stuck with him. And then I was really fortunate enough very quickly from August of 99 to November of 99, where I went out to Sedona, Arizona and went to an, an actual live lecture with Ra, the source of this knowledge. And once I actually sat in the room and heard him speak directly, because I already heard him recorded, but once I was in the room with him and actually got into his aura space, uh, it was definitely something there. I couldn't tell you what it was, but it was definitely very compelling, very magical and mystical in nature. And that was it. I was pretty much like ready to keep moving forward with this. And, you know, now it's been 22 years. I spent the next 10 years or 12 years right up to Ra's death in 2011. Him is my teacher. I ended up becoming, a, uh, I have 11 certifications as a professional on all these different levels that I'm qualified to share this knowledge. And, you know, it's just been really amazing because I never gave up my doubt or suspicion or, you know, keeping uh, cautious as to, you know, is this really valid? But in 22 years, it's not ever not proven itself. And just by how many people are here right now and how much it's expanded into the social media world. And I've done thousands of readings at this point and nothing is more magical or amazing to me as to how somebody actually receives this, because I'm just, you know, I'm a technician, I'm a mechanic. I just kind of know how to read the chart and how it lands and who's ever receiving it really is the proof in the pudding. And so in all these readings, I've never actually had anybody ask for their money back or <laughs> say that they didn't uh, find aspects of what I shared about them to be accurate. And frankly, the only times when that did occur was when I had the wrong time. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the AM and PM gets mixed up. And so I gave them a PM reading instead of an AM. And then I got resistance or a lack of enthusiasm. And that actually proved to me more than anything that this information is valid when I was giving the wrong reading mm -hmm. to somebody and they didn't resonate to it because, you know, I'm not... Uh, you know, I, I can see that people often just want to agree with you, even if they don't find it to be accurate. You know, they mm -hmm. want to believe that you're right, even if they don't internally. So, you know, so that really just justified more how things went. And, uh, and Juji, Juji can share her information as to um, her meeting, which started on June 4th of 2018. But who's counting? We are. <laughs> and mystically enough, it was at the Alchemist Kitchen. <laughs> so um, Stephen had come in. He had been a lecturer there for uh, uh, quite some time, but I actually never met him because uh, I was relatively new to the space and I was helping to sort of coordinate people there. And I had this one coworker who seemed to be experiencing a lot of uh, burnout during our time together. And I didn't really understand why, to be honest with you, but Stephen came in and started speaking to her because they had had a reading before and everything he was sharing with her about her, I just immediately was like, yes, that's exactly what's going on. I, I had no idea this is what was happening. 
And so he left and I turned to my uh, colleague and I said, what was that? And who was that guy? And she was like, oh, that's human design. That's Steven. He's around. He'll be back. And the next time I saw him, I immediately grabbed him and I was like, hi, I'm Juji. I need to know more. <laughs> Do you have some time? And uh, that was the first day that I got a reading. And it wasn't just actually about myself. Um, I happened to bring up my mom during that time. And he ended up looking at her chart as well. And just like one thing after another, after another, just resonated so deeply. And something that so many people have said to me about human design is that like, it doesn't really tell you anything that you don't already know about yourself. It's just that it's giving language to something that you've never really been able to explain. And when you can finally explain it, you can give yourself permission that that's just who you are and how you're here to operate and that there's nothing wrong with you. I hear that all the time after I've, because I've listened to many, many, many readings that Stephen has done. That's what I hear the most is, I finally have permission that that's not something that I need to change or fix or heal about who I am and the relief, the visible relief that you can see wash over people as they receive this information is just so beautiful. I, it never gets old, like Steven said, and it never gets old um, hearing the things about yourself reinforced over and over and over again, because even though you hear it this one time, you know, it's easy to forget in a way, because a lot of what human design says is that one size doesn't fit all. We are all unique. We all have unique needs. And this is a way to honor those needs, but it's not that the world is set up to do that <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> so it's a beautiful way for you to honor yourself and stay firm in that, but it, it does deserve repeating. And that's one of the reasons why we created this community is because we want to be the source of this reinforcement, this empowerment, this uh, support for anybody who's in this journey, because once you've had your reading, you're on a journey for sure. And this in a way is the first step in all of your journeys, because, you know, from here on out there, you'll probably see human design more. Like I, I hear so often when I meet somebody new, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, human design. And they're like, you're the third person to bring that up this week. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm it keeps trying to show itself to you, you know? So Stephen, what can you tell us about the deconditioning process and what, what that generally looks like in terms of a journey since you've been on yours for quite some time? Yes, and, and to speak to what you're saying is human design is a revealed system. There is nothing new here. You know, as I like to say often with people, it's like, well, here's your chart. It's a natal chart, right? It's the moment of birth. So we're all born perfect. But where are you today? Because once you're born and you're in the world, then you're dealing with the world all the time. And the world has its way. When you look at a chart, there's parts of it that are colored in. You know, I wear my chart right here. There's parts of it that are white, parts of it that are colored in. What's colored in is me. That's what I'm here to surrender to. That's my nature. That's my fixed chemistry. That's me 24, 365. And then the white parts, which for me are the upper sections, the upper four centers. That's where I take in the world. That's where I'm filtering everything that's not me. So there's you and there's not you. And what's not you is not bad. It's just not you. So what's not you is where you can potentially become wise in because you're taking it in from all sorts of different people and the planets as they move through their cycles. And you get to experience where what you call where you're open or undefined. And that's where you can potentially become the expert of because you know, you've filtered all the different ways that you can experience that part of you. 
but it's not you. So don't make a decision from there because it's not consistent or reliable. What is consistent or reliable is where you're defined, where you're connected, where your life force emanates from, what makes you unique when you step into anybody else's frequency or aura, right? They're taking in you, you're taking in them. You may share some stuff, but they have stuff you don't have. You have stuff they don't have. And that's where the dance is, you know? And we all wanna complete ourselves. We all have what are called aspects of chemistry. And all that chemistry is really bent on connecting to those pieces to complete the circuits because we are electrical systems. When you look at your chart, you're looking at a circuit board with its different streams and all the things. And all of the, your pieces want to connect to the other pieces and that's life. So the, the context of when you enter into human design is as adults, because this doesn't apply to people that are fresh to the world, especially if they're like under five or seven years old, that for us as adults, it's about letting go of the things that we've been carried around in terms of where we're open, that we've been trying to perfect or work on or where things don't go right, or it's really inconsistent or whatever. And the first seven years actually, because this is a genetic learning, that's why we call it genetic yoga, that we shed a skin every seven years. And so the first seven years as adults meeting this information is to kind of let go of all the things that you've been holding on to. It's like to say, we're all carrying these 10 story buildings on our shoulders that don't belong to us. So first you got to get rid of that weight, right? You, you can't become who you are until you stop being who you're not. And as, as in the way we're brought up through our minds in terms of being the source of what we think is where our decisions are designed to come from, all of that baggage lives in our heads and we've been trying to work on it, which is why we have these, so much anxiety and our, you know, the proliferation of mental conditions that are becoming more and more prevalent, especially after we've gone through what we've gone through as a collective mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. And, and I see the future in terms of as we evolve out of this last few years and this virus, hopefully, that this is a real opportunity to re-enter into being in the room with somebody else, but you really come in clean as yourself, knowing what's your strategy for decision-making, having a, an idea or a, 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 a concept of where your decisions, where your inner authority lies in terms of how to respect yourself, love yourself. And there's no wrong way to do this. You know, it's just how good are you at seeing? Even if you go against your nature, as long as you can see you're going against your nature, you're still doing it, you know, but up till now, without this revelation, without this being revealed to us, because it's always been you, it's never not you, that now you just have a new way of watching it because you have a way to how to enter into a decision. And then once that decision is in front of you, how to measure within your body, which is the key because your mind is never a source in human design. Our minds are for each other as my mind and Juji's mind are for you at this very moment. And, and my mind can't help me. Only my body knows what's for me as I filter whatever stimulus. And you get to play your game too. And we're all different. We can share a lot of commonalities. You know, there's four types. Most of us are generators or manifesting generators. So we share a certain quality that's pretty much the basic quality of that type. But once you go deeper into the specifics of what makes up that type, the actual chemical uh, configuration of their exact chart, then you really have a place that is about the surface where we all live in terms of the general way 68% of us make a decision in this one out of four types, but then you really get to see this kind of real specific ways that it moves through you before you get to that uh -huh, uh -huh moment, as we say, for the generator. Um, well, you know, part of what we will be discussing um, in our, uh, in same time next week, actually, 
uh, in our next iteration of this is the aura types. So we're going to be presenting um, the foundation of human design next week. Uh, and we'd love for you to be there because there's more of a specific presentation for that. But if anybody has any questions right now, we would love to take them um, based on anything that you know about yourself, or if there's anything that you'd like to know about the system itself from us, we would love to answer those for you. You can either raise your hand or you can put it in the chat. Either way, I will read them out loud and we will get to everyone, hopefully. Um, there's no bad questions. Exactly. Jill, you are, you are ready to rock. Um, I usually am. The later it gets, the more energy I have. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious because I really know very little about this, as I, I said. And uh, is it because I'm coming from a reference of astrology, which is very much archetypal. Are you able to meet people and you go, oh, yeah, manifester or manifester generator? Do you do you get that hit? as it were, of what some categories that people fall into, or is it not that immediate? Um, you know, you can. There's, as I like to say, when I work with anybody, I'm going to, you. it's always your words. I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna say whatever you say, and I'm going to potentially be able to tell you why you said it and where it came mm. from. Oh, nice. Now, since human design is a science and it's based on, you know, a specific time, date and place of birth, uh, it's not really about guessing, even though people throw out their clues and you'll hear them. Um, but, you know, we're not, it's, that's not really, you know, part of what I'm here to share, like how good I am at like picking out people, but it's fun to do that and then get their chart and see if you're right, mm. you know? But um, that's why the beauty of human design, you know, it's all written down. It's a science. I've been studying it. I studied for 10 years directly with the source. I took many, many courses. So I'm pretty good at that. And others are even better at it in a way because they're just different than I am. And, um, and Christine, I think, was asking, how does it differ from astrology, mm -hmm. right? Um, Actually, human design is a synthesis of all the world's knowledges synthesized into one system. So Eastern and Western astrological mapping is very much a part of the system itself. Um, we have a mandala, a wheel that's part of this. And in astrology, you have 12 houses. And with human design, we start with 64 gates. And every gate has six lines. So with human design, there's actually 1,080 unique points of entry just as a starting place in analysis. But the, the astrological wheel is also incorporated into what's called the I Ching wheel as well. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen, we had a question that was two parts and I'd, I'd love to answer the first part, which is where do I get my chart? <laughs> Um, so uh, if you go to geneticyoga.com, the first button that you see is get my chart. You can fill out your information there and we will send you your complete chart. So if that's something that you're interested in, I highly recommend doing that, especially if you want to come next week, because then you can follow along with what we're talking about while you have your chart in front of you. And that's actually the most valuable. If you already have your aura type and you can sort of see what we're looking at when um, you're looking at your own chart at home. And then the second part of it is, um, is there a place in the chart that determines what your career path should be? And if so, what do you look for to consider this? What is relevant in the chart? Um, Stephen, I'd love for you to answer this, but I also uh, sort of have something I'd like to share about this because what I find is that most of the time, like people know exactly what they want to do, whether they're doing it or not. And so the chart is a way to maybe reinforce that um, because the chart isn't here to tell you what 
you're going to enjoy. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're enjoying something, the chart may be able to reveal to you why you're enjoying it. Um, and if you're not, maybe there's a reason why. Um, but there's no like, this is the accountant channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, this is where you know you're supposed to be president of the United States or anything like that. Um, oh, yeah, wow. I mean, often I'll tell, I can tell you why you're doing what you're doing, why, you know, my, my friend is a lawyer or a tennis player, tennis coach, and, you know, they had certain aspects, which are very kind of general, but also really speak to why they're in certain types of, uh, activities that lend them to certain ways that they interact with others. Not necessarily specifically the job, but the job puts them in a situation where they meet less resistance in general. So, you know, the types of careers can be kind of narrowed down in a way. Like, for instance, uh, Luca's workmate, Roshina, I was talking to her and she also has a job in a restaurant and, you know, and her chart has she she's uh, likes to she's here to be in response so it's like it's easy you go up and you know you're already like they're just going to tell you what they want to eat so it's not like you have to inform them they're going to tell you know you just say can I help you and they go uh-huh like what would you like and uh, they write it down to, there's something about the, the smell in her chart there's something about uh, busyness in her chart there's something about you know being really in the now in her chart so you know it doesn't matter what you do as long as you love it. I mean, that's the key in human design. If you don't love what you do, it's never going to work anyway. So the first step is your signature, right? And we'll get into this next week, but generators are here to be satisfied. So mm -hmm. you can measure your life if you're being frustrated or you're being satisfied. Those are the, those are the two sides. Everything's a duality in human design. So all generators experience frustration and satisfaction. So now you have this means by which to just kind of measure. Are you being frustrated or do you feel satisfied? Do you feel good at the end of the day? Or are you, you know, full of anxiety and dread about going back tomorrow? Do you know, I mean, that's, there's an indication now. Life flies at us, you know, in human design life, we say life is an illusion and life is always flying at us. So you really don't know what's for you until you, till it literally shows up in your frequency and you have a chance to measure it in terms of your decision-making, your strategy, in terms of measuring it through your inner authority. So for me, like I have no idea what's going to happen next, literally, but I feel really confident within myself because I have a way to measure no matter what shows up, how it, how it moves through me. So it's not about what I think, it's just about how my body receives it. And, you know, uh, then I go through a mind body battle because the mind is often going to argue with it because that's what it does. And so now I just have this cool way of just watching life. So it really doesn't matter what happens, how it shows up. Mm -hmm. I have a way to, to trust myself and that's all that matters. So, you know, you, you become equipped to deal with any situation and it takes time. You know, you, you first, the first beginning, the first year or two, usually can speak to that as well as I, in terms of what it's like, in terms of how your life starts to shift when you shift the way you make a decision or you start to experiment with that part of what human design reveals. But it's, it, like, like, like Juzy said, like what's the, what, one of the most rewarding things for me in a reading is just watch people's facial muscles and tension just shift from when they sat down to when they leave. Because all I'm doing is just giving whoever permission for something that they've always known about themselves. But, you know, the way we filter life or, you know, given the rules of how we're supposed to live our lives, force us to, you know, think that we have to and you must and you should and all these things that don't feel good right because we are designed to feel good I mean that's life is about you know we're here to enjoy our lives and feel good about ourselves and 
and that's a challenge for many, many people. And, you know, it's, it's getting, what we say, it's getting thicker out there. It's getting more intense. Um, it's, it makes it more challenging to surrender because, you know, the movie, The Matrix is a great analogy. Everybody's caught up in their mental lives that they really don't li listen to themselves. They, it's really hard to listen to your body and what it's telling you. So that's the job of a reading or starting your experiment is train your mind to listen to your body. It's always been there from the day you're born till the day you die. You're perfectly equipped. It's just becoming more aware of how that equipment works. Mm -hmm. And the older you get, the more the mind takes over and the body becomes buried in that yeah. sense. So to liberate you so that you can, even if, even if you're not doing it, you know, you have everything you need to know in your first reading to enter into the experiment, but it takes support. It's about getting your reading, getting empowered, going out into the world, live your life because that's where the action is. That's where you get your lessons. And then you come back and you share your experience. We sort it out. We give you like another nugget, another layer of information, S go out in the world, play with it, come back. It's this back and forth. There's a lot of repetition built into this process. Um, the follow-up to that career question was, I'm in a career that I'm good at, but I don't enjoy. I've mm. heard that many times. I feel like I've lived that, in fact. How, old, how old are they? How old is this person? I don't know. Um, you that's age? a good question. Let's see if they answer. And then, um, <laughs> the... Can I just talk? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Easier. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm 33. Um, I, I work in human resources, so you'd think I'd know. Um, but yeah, and I have a master's degree in this. So it's just something I fell into. I had no, I, well, here's the thing. Uh, yeah, I would love to like go out and like be an artist, right? But the reality is, is that I have bills to pay <laughs> and I don't get to live the lifestyle that I want if I don't like support that in, in a way that is feasible to me right so it's like finding that balance between it and I'm like just like with a decade of experience now in this profession I'm like stuck between like feeling like I'm just gonna put my head down and just like do this until I die because that's just what human existence is or I'm going to like just quit my job and like just go and get a PhD and just say to hell with everything like I just I'm very not satisfied in life right now I know that well, see, just knowing you're not satisfied gives you the opportunity as life flies at you when something that does speak to you, that speaks to your energy and how to release it. I don't know what type you are, but, you know, generators are called energy types. And as I like to say, we're here to release energy. We're not here to work. And even at 33, you're still very young in the process that in human design, we say it takes 50 years to grow up and we're not really here to actually really know who we are until we have 50 years of experience or a collected memory to understand the nature of how life works because your chart has it's called an incarnation cross and potentially this very long uh, experience that you've had is really going to serve whatever might show up next as a great next step in terms of something that will be satisfying to you. But it's, you know, uh, our minds want to project into a future that doesn't exist. And that's what the mind does. It dwells in the past and projects into the future. It doesn't even live in the now. So when we live in our minds or make mental decisions, we can get really stuck with those choices, with those decisions. And it's to just make yourself, again, if you're you know, a generator and you're here to say, wait to respond, that as long as you're paying attention, that the thing that might just take you into a whole new direction could happen tomorrow. You just don't know. But it's about being ready for it when it does show up. That's the thing. Be ready to go aha uh -huh to that or give yourself time to examine it long enough while you're still 
doing what you've been doing, even though it's not satisfying. And it just takes time. I mean, you know, I, I didn't feel that I was even really liberated in my own life until I hit my Chiron, which is at 50. And then I, I started to go, okay, now I know you're, you know, at your age, it's not a very satisfying answer <laughs> to hear it like that. Um, but that's the beauty of this information is that, you know, you don't have a choice. <laughs> you're going to stick around, hopefully. And time goes by pretty fast. And you're at this really interesting place in your process where you finish what's called your Saturn. You're in your, your post-Saturn, which is the first 30 years. And for all of us, that's really the first phase of the three-phase life. So you're really fresh into a second phase. So maybe that dissatisfaction is really kicked up in the last couple of years, something that you were doing in a, in the Saturn, your first Saturn cycle. And now that cycle is over and often stuff that you did between, you know, your early years up till 30. And once you get past 30, all that stuff you don't relate to anymore because you're in a whole new phase. You're now entering really into your Uranian life your 84 year part of your existence. And that's a big part of understanding our nature. Like we used to be Saturnian, meaning we used to live up uh, basically a 30 year life. Well, now this human design shows us that we're Uranian and that's an 84 year cycle. So really a lot of what a human design is about is that we have these bodies that are designed to live an 84 year life, but we have a mind that's stuck in a 30 year life cycle. So our minds, <laughs> are really unsatisfied because, you know, what do we do to the poor children at 18? What do you want to do with your life? You know, we're trying to push people into careers way ahead of time before there has, mm -hmm. you know, they're still just experiencing life. They're just here to take it in, you know? I mean, a lot of people, certain charts, I'll say to them, if they come to me under 30, I say, look, just don't die. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's just life, just live it. You know, now that you're more equipped, you know, with Juji, with our, our friend uh, Kim that she's talking about, where I just said a couple of things to her, you know, she was a burnt out projector. Uh, you know, I know she was, there was bitterness. So I just said, hey, are you getting enough rest? You know, are you reaching for the sweets? And she was like, yeah, I'm exhausted and I've got all my chocolate. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, get more rest. Just, you know, be, just treat yourself better. You'll be fine. You know, life is, you're young in the process. And that's literally what Juji overheard, right? That really sparked her curiosity. Um, I, I would want to add in terms of whatever we, we feel is like a level of experience that we've had, like there's no such thing as wasted experience. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I had no real, I, I was at a point in my, life and my career that I was like, why did I just do all of that? You know, especially when I met Steven and it was so interesting because everything that I learned before I met human design has been of tremendous value to me going forward. I just didn't know why I was learning those things or what it was going to be good for until it actually showed up. So nothing is a waste of time. There's no such thing as a wasted degree. There's no such thing as a wasted anything, really. As long as there was value there, it might be 10, 20, 30 years before you know why, but it's definitely valuable. Um, so I, I want to move on to another question because it's a really good one and Stephen you sort of touched on it how do you navigate life better if your chart is mostly open meaning you only have two centers defined uh well that means that there's a lot of education that you're here to become very wise in terms of how life works when you only have two centers defined and I'm, I'm reading that um bottom and bottom left. So that's a, well, I guess, a splenic projector. So the, there's a strategy and an authority that goes along with having those two centers. There's a way to know if you're being engaged by others in terms of how they recognize you and how to 
know if it's the right recognition for you. And yes, you're taking in, you're filtering a lot from the world around you. And it is a challenge. You know, we're all challenged. There's no lack. I mean, you get 26, all of us get 26 out of 64 potential connections. So the chart is mostly, we're, we're all designed mostly to receive. You know, we're still like young as a, as a species in terms of evolution. So life is mostly about filtering experiences. So by being able to watch things and understand what you're experiencing doesn't change how it moves through you because anybody who has this kind of chart has a pretty intense experience being in the world and, or being in a city where there's a lot of different people that you're dealing with, even if they're just standing behind you in the, in the store um, that, but, but you have a way, you know, and yeah, it takes education. Um, if you, this is a projector chart and uh, human design is literally made for projectors because projectors are system oriented people in general. They're always trying to understand why people are making the decisions they're making. Mm. So now that they may have, this person may have this opportunity to start watching more than feeling it's them, seeing that, oh, all of that's coming from outside of me. And now I'm just more in observational. I mean, that's what you see in people that are into human design after a while is that they're less reactive because they're more interested in just kind of, if they can see what they're seeing. And that's all human design is. It's just about seeing, you know, how good are you at seeing what you're seeing? It doesn't matter what it is, as long as you can see it, you know, you're still doing it. So I don't know, um, I hope that answers that a little bit. The question that um, it came up next is, uh, if you could explain a little bit more about releasing energy as a generator. Sure. Well, as, as opposed to the splenic projector, when I do a splenic projector reading, because I'm a four motor generator, there's four motors in the chart. Also, Luca's a four motor generator as well. Um, that's the maximum amount of energy that a chart can uh, possess. Um, I would say to somebody who's a splenic projector is like, you know, I'm what you're dealing with in the world. Meaning the world has, can kind of be boiled to those that have the energy and those that see the energy. So those that have it can't see mm -hmm. it because they're in it. And those that don't have it see it, but uh, get caught up in the energy. So the future is really about a cooperation between those that have it and those that can see it. And if you have it as a generator, what we say is you wake up like a fully charged battery, full of energy. And the goal every single day is to expel that energy completely to the point of exhaustion and collapse, meaning pass out at the end of the day that you are completely drained of energy. Don't go to sleep. Only go, only go to the, hit the pillow when you can't stand up or keep your eyes open anymore. And then you recharge overnight and then you're ready to do it all over again as an energy type. And so, you know, I hate the word work. I don't want to work. I just want to do what I want to do. I want you know, right now I'm doing what I love to do, which is this. This is just a great way for me to release my energy. It's really satisfying to be with a group like this and be able to talk about human design and I'm a generator. So I'm here to be in response and to have questions and I get to respond, you know, this is everything for me. And, you know, I have 22 years of experience. So I love getting it out because I've been stuffing it in for so long and uh, to share it is the joy to be of service, right? That's, that's what I like to be of mostly. And so your goal as somebody who's a generator is to wake up full of energy and you respond to life itself. You know, you respond to a cold day by closing the window or cleaning your house when it's dirty or going shopping. Then often you respond to a question, you know, and the, and your body actually is totally equipped as a generator is that means you have a defined sacral center 
to have an opportunity to train your mind to hear your sacral motor, which actually makes noises. It's the sounds that come from your body as opposed to the words that come from your mind. So the whole trip for any generator or manifesting generator, train your mind to hear your own sounds as they happen in response. And as simple as when you go to a store and they say, can I help you? And you go, uh-huh. Just if you can mentally make a note of that, you're well on your way to being able to listen to yourself. But that's the trip, right? We've all been trained to use our minds. So as soon as you could talk, those sounds were really buried. That muscle, the sacral muscle, as you get older, gets, uh, gets atrophied. So our job here is to help exercise that muscle. You know, there's, we do sacral se sessions where you just ask yes or no questions, where the only rule is only, only sounds, no words in response any kind of question, but it always has to be in the form of a yes or no, because the body can't answer open-ended questions. So if you're a generator, and here we have a manifesting generator, a projector relationship. So the generator is an aha, uh aha -huh, uh -huh person. And the projector is here to become really wise in the ways of how to ask yes or no questions. When it comes time to make a decision, you can discuss anything intellectually. When it actually is like, hey, are you hungry? As opposed to what do you want to eat? You know, do you want to go out? Uh-huh, uh-uh. Do you want to stay in? Uh-huh, uh-uh. It's not like, you know, it's not chicken or fish. It's like, do you want the chicken? Eh. Do you want the fish? Mm. Well, we have tuna, uh-huh, until you get to the final thing. So as a generator projector relationship, which is really different types, have really different ways, demands a level of respect that's different than if you're the same type because you have the same general way, that... The generator is here to invite the projector to ask them questions. The, uh, the projector is here to ask the generator if it's okay to ask them a question. And then you just go back and forth and just to clean up the frequency of mundane everyday conversations or decision-making makes all the difference in your aura frequency, because that's what we're talking about, right? My words are hitting your eardrums and smashing against them at, you know, this decibel, if we could see it on that microscopic level, but really it's our auras. Once we're in the room with another person, you know, I mean, here we're, we're all remote, but if you're actually sharing aura space, which is your two arm lengths, my two arm lengths. So if you're within a four arm length configuration, you're actually having a genetic conversation. The manifesting generator aura is talking to the projector aura. And now it's about this cooperation as to how to respect how different we are by understanding the nature of how we're different. And you just watch that unfold because life is simple. You know, if, if it's not simple, it's not true. So when you get too many complex explanations, be suspect. And human design is very direct. It's literally designed for a mom to raise their kid with. That's really what this is about. Mm -hmm. So if your child is an aha, uh aha -huh, uh -huh child, then just stick to aha, uh aha -huh, uh -huh questions. Like, you know, not like go clean your room. Nobody's designed to be told what to do. You're either here to be asked, invited, informed, you know, those are the three major ways, but nobody is designed to be told what to do. It immediately causes a resistance in the frequency for all of us. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I heard that. I did too. Um, so just real quick, Stephen, uh, there's two more questions. One being, does the human design chart change? Um, meaning, uh, does it change over time with phases? Um, but before you answer that, Tabitha asked, what all will be covered in the intro class? For example, will you go into what it means to be defined, various chakra centers, motors? I know there's only time for so much, so just curious about the focus. Um, so Tabitha, the answer to that is we will be covering the aura types, which is to some degree about definition, and then we will open it up to questions. So if we, through questions, we generally get a little bit deeper into those things, but 
uh, what it means to be a generator and an MG, a projector, a manifester, or a reflector is what we will really be covering. And then um, if we have, we will have time for questions. So we will probably get into more specifics about definition. Um, but Stephen, would you like to answer that question about the chart changing? Sure. And, and speaking to Tabitha, um, when you look at your type, you're looking at your strategy for decision making. And that's where we start. We always start, human design starts on the surface where you live, right? You live in terms of how you make a decision. So the first step in meeting yourself is to have this concept and beginning to play with the concept depending on your type. And that's really important because it's really easy to get caught into the rabbit hole of human design and want to go deep and then got caught up in really deep stuff and really kind of not focus on what's really important, which is your next decision. So we like to start everybody there. And yes, you do go through phases in terms of there's a Saturn phase, which is your first 30 years. And then you go in your next 20 years until you get to your Chiron phase, which is what we call like graduation day. It takes 50 years to grow up. So you know, you do evolve within your own process, but the way your chart is designed doesn't change itself. You know, you're, it's, a, it's your chemical, you know, it's an imprint at the moment you're born and that imprint doesn't change, but there are learning curves that come along with what in the line value in the chart. So there's gates, there's lines, there's colors, there's the tones. And so as we go down the layers, there's channels, there's circuits, there's streams. So there's all these different levels and we can, you know, we, as, as people get more educated, it's kind of like we go down and then when you hit this line level, which is where we live, like an actor, you have lines in that sense. And that's where there's learning curves built in, in terms of in the first 40 years, what you're really here to understand about what it literally says about your chart and then we can go below the surface where we get into the psychology we get into your learning uh the way the way you filter knowledge your environments the way you're designed to take in nutrition you know this is a really a full service uh i mean human design is the true owner's manual it's mm. like we've never had one everything every product you buy comes with an owner's manual except for us and now it's here and it's really here to help moms overall, but it's for everybody. You know, if you're alive on, I mean, I've done deathbed readings for somebody <laughs> who was over 90 years old and just to take them through their process and, you know, encapsulate that whole life and for them to like acknowledge, yeah, you know, that they saw it. I mean, that is some wild, I mean, I even get goosebumps just thinking about those opportunities to talk to somebody that's open to receiving. You know, I'm a generator. I'm here to wait to respond. You know, I, I can't offer this. It has to, you have to ask me for it. You know, otherwise I meet resistance and it's not going to work anyway. But once the, once a, somebody is receptive and ready to receive, it's, it's always a, a magical mystical process and and that's what human design is i like to call it it's user-friendly mysticism mm. because we're all designed to live a truly not hyperbole but actual mystical life like actually mystical and it's simple life is very direct it's very simple we've dressed it up in our minds to be something you know that has to have you know lights and all this stuff going on but life is mundane and if you can surrender to being in the now with every breath of your life, then you get to really live it. And that's what's really exciting to like do that. And for me, I know we got to wrap up, um, to have as the future unfolds, to actually be in the room with other people because uh, I lived in Hawaii and we would have groups twice a week, sometimes 20, 30 people. And it, it was really just wild to watch like people vibing on this level where, you know, there's just a lot of self-acceptance, acceptance of the other. It becomes, there's no judgment because life is chemical. So it's not, there's nothing to judge. I mean, you, you know, it's your chemistry. It can't be wrong. 
<laughs> um, Stephen, before we wrap up, uh, I know that Luca actually had a question for you, and somebody had asked in the chat if there was a good book that uh, we recommend. I mean, there's lots of books about human design, but the one that is the most uh, encompassing is the definitive book of human design. So it gives a lot of history of the origin of the system. It goes into a lot of detail about type, about authority, about um, the different channels and circuits and all of that stuff. So if you're really looking for a deep dive, that's a really great book. Um, you know, we're going to continue probably to be a broken record and say that the most important thing is to get a reading so that you know what it says about you, because it's very, very specific. Um, and that's really where it all starts. But obviously, there are some people who are investigators and like to know everything there is to know. Right. And, about and you get that at uh, humandesignamerica.com, if I'm not mistaken. You can buy it on Amazon, actually. Amazon, but uh, check the prices, might get a better deal at the source. Okay. And uh, Luca, you had a question? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, because I know on the 21st, we're doing the Rave New Year. Why is human design on a different calendar system? That's a great question. Well, there, the, the, the chart itself shows where the Earth's new experience begins. And it doesn't begin on January 1st. It's called gate 41. It's, uh, it's called the gate of decrease. And it's the beginning of the experiential way in terms of a collective experience as human beings in our emotional life. So the earth starts off its solar cycle at when gate, when it hits gate 41 line one, and that's the start of our next year, our next 365 days of being in a new experience collectively. We call gate 41 the capital letter at the beginning of a sentence. So it starts there with the, co the collective, the universal application of the, through the stream of desire or experiences right? There's seven and a half billion people on the planet, and we're all having a different experience. I mean, that's really the theme of being a human being right now. And so January 21st is the day. And, you know, and just like, why do people have trouble with resolutions? You know, they started on January 1st, and they give it up by the second week of January, because uh, January 1st is what we call the cross of tension. There's a lot of stress energy in the program that's very individual. And we really haven't completed uh, our business in terms of what we've experienced. So there's like, we kind of rob ourselves of like finishing up properly by not taking advantage of the, the gates. There's four gates that we go through prior to January 21st. And it's really valuable to take that time to understand because we are, everything is connected, right? We are one solar cell, you know, we, ex when we experience exactly what goes on on the other side of the world when we're asleep, they experience what we're experiencing when, when we're asleep, they experience, you know, I mean, it's really, you know, everything is connected, even though we live in an illusion of separateness. So on a collective level, being on this earth, that's when our shared experience really begins. So part of what we're going to be exploring during the Rave New Year experience is to sort of wrap up what 2021 meant energetically and what we can expect in 2022 energetically so that we're clear on where we've been and then where we're going. And we're going to have a little countdown, just like New Year's. It's going to be at like 8.50, I believe, um, EST. So that's going to be cool. Um, I think everyone here is on the East Coast. So that'll make sense for everyone there. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Stephen. And Luca, what a great question. It's like you're good at this or something. 
<laughs> <laughs> Are you really all from New York, though? Is that everybody present here? I um, am. Almost everybody was in that region, at least. Oh, interesting. Because I, I was, as I said, born in New York. I, I was born at the Gotham Hospital, which I heard burnt down shortly after. But I live in California, so I didn't want to be that different in the group. Well, I'm in California, so that oh, makes okay. sense. <laughs> your neighbors. Yes, basically. Oh, maybe you're next door. <laughs> yeah, I'm waving at you now. <laughs> <laughs> just All right, to, guys. I did drop the dates into the chat so everyone can oh, awesome. yeah the 13th and the 21st and sign up and then also um we're going to be sending out the recording and follow-up email oh, nice. tomorrow yep absolutely well, um and again if anybody you. wants a free chart geneticyoga.com yeah. and all of our i, I enter them all in manually <laughs> yes he does Will that be and, written in anything that you're sending, the geneticyoga.com or anything, how to do that if we need further information? Yes. And also, um, Genetic Yoga has a special code with us, so we'll offer that code so you get a Thank little you. discount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we're also on Instagram, Genetic Yoga Instagram. I also have a more personal Human okay. Design Now Instagram handle, so feel free to uh, join us there, too. Good, thank you. Well, thank you guys. It was great meeting you all virtually. Maybe one day we get to like actually feel each other's frequency. That would be awesome. And I uh, really appreciate your attendance. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was wonderful. Thank you guys for your wonderful questions and hopefully we'll see you next week. That'll be a lot of fun. Thank you. Okay.